Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, your destination for the latest in world of technology, how it shapes our work, our lives, and even world. I'm your host, ready to guide you through the twists and turns of this dynamic landscape. And today, I've got a vital topic to put on your radar, API security. We all know about APIs, and if you don't, I'm going to walk you through what they are and why they're so important. And most importantly of all, why it's important to secure them. Because today, my guest is William Glazier from Sequence Security, and he's going to share some exclusive insights from their recent API protection report. Now, Sequence Security is a front-runner in API security, and they've done some extensive research into the latest threats targeting consumer-facing, business-to-business, and machine-to-machine APIs. And in this report, they analysed nearly a trillion transactions across various industries and they uncovered a startling 550% jump in unique threats during the holiday season. So I want to find out more about the world of API security, how it's evolving, especially with threat actors combining API and and web application security tactics, leading to a 220% spike in anomalous traffic. So when we combine that with a 900% surge in, in shadow APIs, I think it's a testament to the lack of API visibility among enterprises. That's just a few of the things we're going to be talking about today. So sit back and get ready to delve deeper into this critical issue. And for that, I'm going to have to ask you to buckle up and hold on tight. Because it's time for me to beam your ears all the way stateside, where William Glazier is going to help us navigate the intricate web of API security. So, a massive warm welcome to the show, Will. Can you tell everyone listening a little about who you are and what you do? Thanks, Neil, um, and thanks a lot for having me on. It's a pleasure to talk to you. So, I'm the Director of Threat Research at Sequence Security, and what Sequence does, we're we're in API security, offering unified API protection. Um, And what that that means is we spend a lot of time, my team in particular, We spend a lot of time in our product with our customers, helping them understand their threat surface, their threat landscape. The API ecosystem has exposed, has grown tremendously fast at tons of enterprises. Attack surface sprawl, attack surface footprint is a problem. So discovery and inventory and understanding your risk profile, what APIs have risk is, is, is one part of the job. We work with the customers to do that. But then at the same time, while your left hand is doing that, your right hand needs to protect those APIs. So you got to have policies to understand what legitimate behavior, legitimate traffic over the wire looks like and what automated abuse looks like against those APIs. APIs are designed to be used in an automated interaction, right? And so splitting the good humans, the normal behaviors, even the good automated behaviors from the bad ones, the abusive ones is is really where our job lies so we work on that with our customers we're in the product we work on developing the product and improving the product so that's that's really who i am and what i do here at sequence um in my spare time i like to watch football and root for the buffalo bills so maybe maybe some of your listeners in the uk know about them they're a bunch of crazy people but uh <laughs> yeah spend a lot of time spend a lot of time on the, the bots and the bills awesome love it and I think we are living in the age of the APIs. I think we could stress the importance of an API to a business now, especially in this age of AI and everyone wanting to unify all that data. But for any business yeah. leader listening or or anyone outside of the cybersecurity industry, I think cybersecurity can be incredibly intimidating and also feel like an incredibly crowded marketplace. So can you explain what sequence security does and and maybe what makes it stand out from the crowd and, and the main objectives for you guys across that cybersecurity landscape? Because there's so much going that's, on, isn't there? Yeah, that's that's a great a great point. And yeah, so so many times it could come off like rocket science. Yeah, and and it really need not be. Um, APIs. What, what APIs are doing right is powering many of our modern applications that we use on a daily basis on the internet. Um, so when you think about it that way, this is application security and applications are designed to be used to be user friendly to a degree, right? There's a method, a methodology to using them, um, that has to make sense to, to some degree if, if they're being done well, that is. Um, and, and so where sequence sits in and what our main objectives are is to secure those APIs from people who are abusing them 
in, uh, you know, using them in unauthorized manners, right? Whether that be automated manners that are not intended, to, you know, that, that, that aren't intended to be allowed, or whether that be, you know, this API is only meant to be called by a browser, human using a browser on a website, right? Um, and, and we're seeing automated interaction with that API. So sequence fits this, this explosion of API security for, um, you know, in the broader landscape is something that when, when businesses and growth teams get together and talk about like, you know, the move to a microservice architecture, a lot of that, what, what, what's underneath the hood of a lot of that is increased speed of API development. And that, um, presents the risk that these attackers try to exploit, right? Which is these open public APIs, which may not be protected like the old legacy architecture was. And we see many of the problems, many application, traditional web application security problems, you know, from 10, 15, 20 years ago, we see them resurfacing against APIs. It's just a different channel for the same kind of attacks. Does that, does that kind of make sense? How it's, it's a little bit of what's old is new again. Yeah. Um, rescanned in the same way. And so that's where I really think it need not, API security need not be rocket science. Um, and one of the reasons why Sequence stands out is actually part of our, our history. Um, I've been at Sequence for a while since it was a really small company, just six people. Um, and so seen kind of an evolution, right? And, um, you know, six years ago, we're talking 2015, right? And if you talked to people about bots on the internet, you probably did it. It wasn't like in the vernacular like it is now, right? Um, then, you know, 2016 election happened. Everybody lost their brains to the hive mind that is social media. And um, everybody and everybody's grandmother knows what bots on the internet are now, right? Yeah. Um, Sequence began and grew up as a bot mitigation company, an advanced bot mitigation company for enterprises. And, and what happened back then was simply bots were moving to attack over APIs. It was the most fruitful channel for them to attack, right? And so we've been doing that and, and mitigating bot thre- uh, bot attacks over APIs for well, more than six years at some of the biggest enterprises that you, you can think of. And so what that, you know, as the API security market grew, we said, well, hey, bot mitigation and API security go hand in hand. They're two sides of the same coin. You can't do you can't expect a program to exist only by doing risk analysis and and profiling and discovery without actually being able to stop malicious actors. So that's really where Sequence kind of believes that we set ourselves apart is that history of blocking a lot of malicious traffic for a long time. There is a um a data and reputational advantage that that builds up in the in the algorithms that that really does help us. And as you said at the very beginning of our conversation, an API or application programming interface is just a, a way for two or more computer programs or applications to communicate with each other and ultimately bring applications together in order to perform a design function built around sharing data and executing predefined processes. But ultimately, I think they work as a middleman, allowing developers to build a new programmatic interaction between various applications. People and businesses, are, of course, use them daily in every industry. We all know what they are. But one of the reasons I was so keen to set the scene on what an API is there is because your recent report showed a 900% spike in shadow APIs, highlighting a lack of API visibility among enterprises. I do think they're those kind of things that we take for granted in the corporate world. So can you explain the significance of that finding and, and why businesses should be concerned about it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Shadow APIs are one of the most common and, and sort of pernicious risks that, that businesses face. And, and what they mean are basically API endpoints that um, we don't know about and understand as an enterprise, right? We might, we might have documentation and have protection and know about a version one of an API or an API that uh, accepts the, the, the post method to you know, send a, a, a login request. But what we might not not know is that same API will accept a put call, or that same API could be iterated to the n one hundredth version, right? And 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 we we don't monitor that traffic, um, and so at sequence, our job is to discover those shadow APIs and then protect them before the customer would hear about them being the being the vector for uh, a data breach, and so. 
um, what, why enterprises need to be concerned about this problem is, um, you might think, you know, every, uh, the, the tax surface of your enterprise. Um, and it sounds like it, it, you have to kind of set aside your ego when we talk about this, um, the shadow API problem, because it sounds so basic, mm. um, at first, at first glance, right? It's like, yes, I know where all my APIs are, right? You, you kind of have a, almost an emotional reaction to that. But attackers are consistently trying to find ways around the wall, right? You build a perimeter for your security, and instead of them trying to pound through the wall or jump over the wall, they'd rather walk around it. That's kind of the analogy for trying to find a shadow API. There's so many tricks that they'll use to try to recon and discover. And um, it's it's actually a really, really hard problem to try and understand the full scope of your API attack surface. So like to business leaders or folks who are thinking about API security, um, it's totally okay. Like we start with the basics with this discussion with all of our customers around attack surface discovery. We, we, we talk about questions that may seem basic of how many APIs do you have? Um, where are they all hosted? We talk about like, how do you even do a robust API security program? How do you make sure that every API that serves traffic, you know about and have documented. It's a really hard problem because it's not just technology. It's also people in process. You got to make developers um, and, and leaders in your org follow some protocols and standards that you may uncover through the technology. And something else that really stood out for me in the report was a 550% increase in unique threats during the holiday season. So I've got to ask, I mean, why such an increase uh, during this period? What yeah. caused that? Any ideas? Yeah, this is this is this all has to do with um, a combination of attacker motivation, which is primarily monetary, right, and the nature of um, you know business in in this case in a lot of our like Western societies. And, and the lead up to the holiday season, right? Holiday season being peak shopping season, um, peak uh, peak human interaction on websites, right? Let's put it this way. The the haystack in which the needle can hide just got a lot bigger, right? And so um, there's a lot more humans doing a lot more things on, on, on sites. Enterprises and businesses know that, hey, this is their period. If this is the quarter, we really got to make our money. Right, we need to have good margins and such, and so attackers kind of understand that. They also understand that during holidays, right, probably dealing with fewer humans on staff, right, watching over some of these tools. So what we see this this pattern and this trend uh, tends to be kind of seasonal and annual. We we see this build up in uh, unique attack patterns, unique threats during months like October, you know, leading into November. Um, so it's not new. It's just something important for enterprises to be aware of. Many of them probably already know this, but you know that month of October is a really important month as far as setting the table for your security through the holiday period. And can I also ask that you tell me a bit more about the meaning behind, I think it was a 220% increase mm -hmm. in anomalous traffic resulting from attackers combining API and web application security tactics. Again, a lot yeah. going on there, right? Yeah. Absolutely. So you, you remember at the beginning in the in the intro when I talked yeah. a little bit about what Sequence does and and some of the API security problems being you know what's old is new again. Yeah. Right. These are these are web application security uh, risks or vulnerabilities or you know TTPs that attackers exhibit, and they've simply morphed a little bit and moved to APIs. Um, one such like technical reference would be. One of the hot terms in API security that people talk about is, uh, it's called, uh, the acronym is BOLA, Broken Object Level Authorization. Mm. It basically means that, hey, me, I'm authorized to access A, and then I go try and query B and C, you know, B and C and D, like an email address for another uh, user, and I get data back from that API, and I shouldn't, right? Um, in web app, it's, it's kind of the same problem, uh, reskin from, from, from years ago, of indirect object, uh, insecure direct object reference, excuse me. Um, where again, the same, the, the, the problem is I'm authorized to access a, and then the application's letting me access X, Y, and Z. Um, so that increase in anomalous traffic resulting from this combination 
is simply us seeing the unification of those TTPs against these enterprises, right? Many times our enterprises are in the midst of their growth and transition to API ecosystem. So they have some legacy architecture, some new, right? So attackers, all they care about is that's just different roads to drive their car on. They care about what's behind the the gates, which is, you know, in this case, something with monetary value. That could be rewards points. That could be um, hot sneakers that they can resell or traders uh, that they could resell on 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 the market. Um, and it could be, you know, straight up cash value, right? I mean, just, just other types of fraud. But um, that 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 trend, that two hundred twenty percent increase, was really just this manifesting itself in the data that we've seen uh, as the organizations are going through their growth um, and, and movement towards API ecosystems. And something else that also caught my attention was that the telecom industry also seemed to have had the most retool attempts with entirely new tactics, techniques, and procedures, all TTPs. Uh, I'm curious, why is this industry in particular facing such a significant API protection challenge, do you think? That is a great question. And that that's actually one of the main points that we want people to take hold with when they when they read this report. And it's actually kind of related to the part of the answer that I just mentioned for the question before, where I said, um, you know, we're seeing enterprises that have to support legacy protocols, legacy architectures in parallel with new systems that you're developing. Telecom industry goes through tremendous merger and acquisition, right? And acquiring of different properties, right? And, and these are big enterprises, right? Running, um, tons of digital systems, tons of physical systems too, critical infrastructure. There's a lot going on, simply. The attack surface is huge. There's a lot of legacy protocols that it's really hard for newer people to jump in and understand. Um, And those mergers and acquisitions present um, sort of integration challenges that can manifest as exposure of shadow APIs and unknown or discovered APIs being exposed to the internet as well. So the telecom industry has these unique problems with their size, scale, and um, and, and the need to support legacy systems to carry out some of the, the the critical functionality that they support in our you know modern economy, and and then also they face some unique types of threats um, due to the importance of the cell phone in our digital life. Right? Um, one of the things that telecoms as a threat is uh, SIM swapping, right? And attackers use SIM swapping as a methodology to execute account takeovers, possibly on a third-party system like a bank, right? Oftentimes when you log into a bank or one of your really important accounts, you'll receive a text message uh, to do second factor authentication. And many people talk, have, have talked ad nauseum about how SMS text message as a second factor authentication isn't the most secure thing in the world. Now it's better than nothing, but still it's it you know sim swapping is the methodology by which attackers intercept that second factor authentication, that that code and then when they log into your account, uh you won't receive that text message they will because they've executed a sim swap now and that text message went to their phone number and then they'll enter that code log in and you'll be none the wiser to it. Um, so those sims, the APIs that uh, allow people to, that, that allow telecoms to grow their business, right? If I'm telecom A, I want cu- customers of telecom B to move to me, right? We usually only have one cell phone provider. So I have to offer a spot on my website where people can come see if my phone number will transition over to the new telecom. Can I keep this phone number if I move, right? So what that API is going to query is, you know, can this MDN or mobile device server can 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 that move over right? That API is you know you can use that API maliciously to check which phone numbers belong to which carriers. Therefore, which carrier am I going to try and attack on? Which carrier am I going to try and execute a SIM swap on? Um, and so that's it's this catch twenty two of an API the business must expose to enable growth. Right? Growth team marketing teams would never let the security team say don't put this on the website. That's it, it's a not totally out of the question, um, but lo and behold, it faces these threats that are unique to the telecom industry. So, 
people really, um, that's one thing we really wanted people to take away from is the telecom industry has unique challenges. Uh, we work really hard with many of our telecom providers to meet those needs. Um, and there's a lot of really good, sometimes it's easy to dunk on companies and enterprises when bad things happen, but there's a lot of really good folks working really hard to keep, um, the, you hear about the bad things, not about the good things that happen on a daily basis, mm -hmm. right? About the things that do get blocked. So, um, kind of a shout out also to our partners. And the report also mentions that application security TTPs and API security TTPs are being used in tandem and deployed using automation vectors. Apologies for using so many acronyms there, but can you can you elaborate on this trend and, and what you think that means for organizations, for any business leaders listening to that? Yeah, again, that's that's it's back to that theme of yeah. you know the migration of the enterprise architecture towards the microservice architecture, right? Towards the new age, towards more more and more APIs, but still having to support our legacy applications and and, and legacy protocols. And so again, those attack tactics will be used in tandem because your enterprise still the, the crown jewels of your enterprise, the data or the the monetary value that your users' accounts have still exists behind both of those things. Right? It doesn't matter if it's uh, more of a, a a legacy API or maybe you've moved to there's a a, a new popular um, API protocol or schema that, that's called GraphQL. Um, and maybe you're in the midst of a transition from a legacy REST API to GraphQL APIs. It, it's the same attack surface, right? Used totally differently, right? By both your application and by attackers trying to exploit it. However, you've got to be able to protect them both in tandem, kind of dance with both feet, shall we say, um, and not be too focused on one and, and leaving the other in the dust. And again, for any business leader listening, based on the findings of your report and everything that you've learned there, are there any specific steps that you'd recommend organizations should take to better protect those APIs that we're talking about and ultimately safeguard against these rising threats that we're talking about today? That's that's a great, great question. And my, I would sort of offer two main pieces of advice. The first one is simplify and don't try to boil the ocean. Those are questions that I mentioned at the beginning that sound kind of dumb and simple. How many APIs do I have? How many APIs transact with some kind of sensitive data that matters from a regulatory perspective? Um, how do I build an API security program? Those are not dumb questions to ask. They're essential questions to ask. Um, and it doesn't mean you're behind the curve if you're asking them. Uh, the second piece of advice I would, I would offer is that to, to really understand and, and cut through the jargon and the noise and, and understand that you know, an API security program can't exist without robust automated bot mitigation and bot defenses, right? They go hand in hand. They are two sides of the same coin. Um, and we think the data in this report validates that, but also it's been acknowledged by the community. The the OWASP community uh, released every, every four years, they release kind of these new um, top 10 risks for APIs. And so um, our report, we released it um, over the summer and they were in the midst of publishing a release, they were editing a release candidate for the new 2023 version. That 2023 version has been released. Um, a lot of our older data was mapped to the older categories, but under the hood, you know, a year ago when Sequence did the same report, we said, hey, there's a category that's not included in the top 10. And it's simply, and we called it the API 10 plus, these are APIs that are perfectly coded, right? There's no risk associated with them, but they get abused by bots, exploiting the business logic to for their own ends, generally monetary exploit, right? And so we said, there's all these things that aren't being covered in the in the in the risk categories. Well, guess what? In 2023, there's a new OWASP API top 10, and one of those and risk categories has now been acknowledged. I think it's the sixth category if you go look it up, and it um. It's, oh no, the, the release candidate was lack of protection from automated threats. Sorry, I don't have the sixth one memorized. I, I'll, I'll, I'll pull it up and we'll make sure we plug that in here at the end of the podcast. Yeah. But effectively, it says that there are APIs. It's unrestricted. I remembered it. It's unrestricted access to sensitive business flows, right? And so what that means is that we allow um, the important critical business flows to be accessed in ways that bots can exploit, right? And there's a sentence in the description of that that says, 
these AP, this risk is not a result of a vulnerability. It's not a bug, right? Many times in, in cybersecurity, we focus on bugs, right? We focus on vulnerabilities, the latest CVEs, and this entire risk category is literally not bugs and, 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 and exploits. It's simply this API fronts very important business logic and attackers are motivated, incentivized to attack it. So if people could take away one real thing from you know one recommendation, it's that those two go hand in hand. You need one um, with the other to really be able to protect on one hand while you are inventorying, discovering, and, and, and scanning for my attack surface with the other. And finally, before I let you go today, I'm going to ask you to look inside our virtual crystal ball today. Now, I don't know any futurist that successfully predicted chat GPT or Meta's threads were going to dominate conversations in 2023. So you don't have too much competition to be out there. But what are your predictions for the future of API security, given the increasing complexity and variety of threats? And, and also, what developments do you anticipate in this field over the next few years? Yeah, I think, I mean, it's funny you mentioned Meta's threads. I can't stop thinking about that. <laughs> I hope I, I hope we do better than that. But um, I I think in the in the future, right, what we'll see is this continued growth and and explosion in a lot of these metrics we'll see. I mean, obviously we'll see some things level off, right, as the as the growth naturally slows. But um APIs will continue to be a very common highway on which automated abusive actors carry out their activity, they'll continue to be, um, they're the kind of things that are meant to be, you know, it, one of the promise of these architectures and this growth, these enterprises is fast develop, right? Yeah. So um, like humans have some inherent tendencies, right? And some, and, and things that we may forget. So as we move forward into like, you know, the, the future of API security, um, one of the areas we'd like to see some you know and hopefully this is me maybe this is me predicting it but um we'd like to see some kind of testing right you have, ultimately there's a lot of things we're learning right now all of us together right what the attacker tactics are what the kind of problems what's what are the most important problems to solve and then once we learn them once we see the attacks once we mitigate the attacks we want to prevent this kind of thing from ever happening again to a reasonable degree a lot of that is um you know builds into how do we develop robust api security tests um that try to emulate these threats and then test for them in the development process in an automated way in an intelligent way right um and that intelligent way is maybe an area where people are going to be using a little bit of the a new you know generative ai riding the generative ai wave yeah. to come up with test plans that um you know you don't have to your humans don't have to think of all of them yourselves you can uh draw on past data past attacks and uh you know have your developers have automated tests happen for them so that they kind of have api security baked into the applications that they're developing um that's really one of the ways that you know uh folks in the api security industry and, and executives and leaders who are thinking about this they think this is how we close the loop, right? We're talking a lot about inventory on one hand, detection and mitigation on the other. And then it's like, how do we bring those two all the way around in a full circle? Uh, that testing piece is the last piece of the puzzle. So we'll see if that prediction comes true. I, you know, I know there are tons of folks working really hard every day to, to make these things happen. Um, but I certainly, I certainly know I can predict it'll be a lot more of the same um it's the, ga the game of tug of war cat and mouse continues and that won't stop and we have talked at length about some very serious and important threats out there today i'm gonna have a little fun with you now and ask you to leave everyone listening with one final gift and that is either a book that is inspired or means something to you that we can add to an amazon wish list or a song that we can add to our spotify playlist all i'm going to ask is what would you like to leave us with and why so i loved um, there's a book called Unbroken by Laura Hill and Branch, same author, Seabiscuit. Um, and I read this book back in, I believe this was back in, um, probably back in high school, I think. And we took, a um, 
there was a class, kind of a throwaway class that was uh, being awesome, uh, sports literature. So you're reading books like Seabiscuit, Friday yeah. Night Lights, this unbroken book, right? And it's the story of this guy, Louis Zamperini from the, um, in the United States in the 1930s and forties. And, um, he was an Olymp, he was, uh, a total degenerate as a child, um, getting into trouble all the time. Um, but then he figured out he was really, he was really fast at running. Maybe that was from running away from people. He goes to the Olympics, um, in, uh, the, the Olympics that were in Munich that preceded World War II. Yeah. Um, and then in world war ii his plane gets shot down and they um spend 40 something days uh or their plane actually broke they, they got shot down another day but they landed then their plane breaks spends 40 days on a raft in the open ocean gets captured spends two years as a prisoner of war the book is really all about just like perseverance and continuing to grind continuing to make it through right um and I do think I mentioned that in predictions of, you know, the future of API security, there's an element of persevering through like the grind, which is like these threats, the attackers aren't stopping. Um, you have to kind of continue on, put one foot in front of the other. <clears throat> and so that book, I, I, I love that book because I love the, I think the concept of perseverance as a trait, as a human trait is kind of like a prerequisite. And it can, um, it, it, if you have that, it can get you past a lot of people who simply just can't hold on long enough, right? Um, so I think that story is fascinating. I think the author is tremendous. Um, uh, and and Sea Biscuit as another book, right? These are stories that maybe people know. I think Unbroken is also a movie, so um, people. I think people know these these stories well, but um, the writing is fabulous. So really like that and definitely recommend that choice awesome i'll get that added to our amazon wish list and i do vaguely remember the film i think it was jack o'connell playing him in that i do remember that great film that's right yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and for anyone listening just wanting to find out more information i'm conscious we've referenced the report today so if somebody wants mm -hmm. to check out that report contact your find out more about your work at sequence security what's the best starting point for everyone? yeah yeah absolutely i would say our our website www.sequence.ai is the best place to go. We have a, um, a whole section on threat research and reports and blogs, uh, collateral produced by my team, by some of our colleagues on on, on the marketing team, and some of our colleagues who work um, who work to make sure we get our get our voice out there, get get the word out there. Um, that'd be the best place to go to go find us. Perfect. I'll get that link added to the show notes so people can find you nice and easily. And as I said at the very beginning, we are living in the age of APIs. They are fundamental to, uh, to almost everything around applications now. And I love how the report focuses on the tactics, techniques, and procedures, or TTPs, employed by threat actors targeting consumer-facing businesses uh, and those machine-to-machine -machine APIs. So I recommend anybody listening to check out that report. There's so much detail in there. It's a great read. But more than anything, just thank you for bringing some of those uh, insights to life today in our conversation. So thanks for sharing of that with me and. Yeah, and I, I definitely need to give a shout out to all my colleagues at Sequence, um, particularly you know on on my team and and so of our colleagues on the marketing team. In particular, um, uh, one of the senior security engineers on my team by the name of Akash Tiwari, um, he's a, a true enterprise security professional. Um, before he worked for us, he worked on the other side of the house, which is working at co uh, companies like many of our customers. Um, he did a great job on you know on synthesizing a lot of this data. So a huge shout out to him and a huge shout out to our colleagues in, in marketing who make the report pop, who get the word out there to preach the gospel of APIs. So a huge thank you to William from Sequence Security for sharing his invaluable insights and shedding a light on the pressing challenges facing API security today. And I, for one, learned about the astonishing spikes in shadow APIs and unique threats, especially during the holiday season and those examples he provided. But the discussion on the rise in fraud and retool attempts in the telecom industry and the importance of safeguarding both legacy and new APIs, incredibly enlightening for yours truly. And I think the future of API security, as we discovered today, may very well lie in the, in the development of robust testing methods, potentially leveraging generative AI, maybe to preempt and counteract some of those threats. That's just me thinking out loud there. But if today's conversation has sparked your curiosity, remember to explore that full API protection report by Sequence Security 
I think it's a great read for anyone just wanting to understand this rapidly evolving landscape of API threats. And remember, please email me, techblogwriteroutlook.com, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, threads, wherever it is you hang out. I'm at Neil C. Hughes. Nice and easy to find. Same name on everything. Don't forget to subscribe to this show if you enjoyed today's episode because I've got a lot more thought-provoking discussions with leaders in technology and business lined up for the next three months. So I hope you'll join me for that. So keep exploring, stay safe, embrace the future of tech. But a thank you for listening as always. And until next time, don't be a stranger.